welcome thank you so much for clicking on this video i appreciate having you here thank you for joining me while i talk about most things coco choir it is my intention to give you a breakdown of this media and i say most things because the media is so versatile that there are other aspects of it that pertain to gardening using it in containers etc but as this is an orchid channel i will be addressing what it is about this stuff and how you can go about handling your orchids when you receive them potted up with coco choir which to be honest is not what anyone in their private collection would choose as a go-to media for their orchids yet and I may be mistaken, so if you are the person that gravitates to coca choir as a media of choice for your orchids, not coca chips, but the choir, then I encourage you to make mention of that in the comments and also which orchids you use coca choir for. Do you use it exclusively in the pot or mix it in with other media? I would not even question using coca choir for orchids because that is the media in which many of our new orchids come in. So it is not as if it is bad for orchids or else many nurseries, including commercial growers, would lose their inventory before even getting it out to the market. And hopefully, seeing as many orchid collectors are in the process of getting new orchids in, if you haven't experienced coca choir with orchids before, the time will come when you do. And if this video is helpful, answered questions that prior to having those answers you would cringe when you see an orchid in that stuff, then please like the video and share it around because, as far as I'm concerned, there will be more and more orchids showing up with Coco Choir in their pots for the reasons that I'm going to explain now. While you listen to the reasons, you will also be able to understand why Coca Choir is in actual fact not bad for orchids at all. As a consequence, when you receive new orchids and they are in Coca Choir, you won't cringe and think, oh, I hate this stuff. Instead, you will already be familiar with the media, even if you have never actually had to deal with it before. But first, as with any media of choice for orchids, we need to understand it. Having an understanding of media is always important to then being able to work with and apply it successfully. So let's get an understanding of coca choir. In the past, all the material from the husk to the inner shell of the coconut was a discard product until people realized it had many applications in gardening and home products. And yes, forgive me for not having as much visual footage to provide you with seeing as my collection arrived mainly in 2018 and that at that time i was not uploading videos uh, i don't have that much visual to give you so um more podcast styly with some beautiful blooms <laughs> anyway i hope to make this interesting regardless of footage or not so let's get back to what coco choir is Everything in between the shell and the outer hard coating of the coconut seed is considered coca choir. There are two types of fibers that make up coca choir, brown and white. Brown choir comes from mature, ripe coconuts and is a lot stronger but less flexible, while white fibers come from pre-ripe coconuts and are far more flexible but not as strong. For many of the consumer industries out there, coconuts are also harvested pre-ripe depending on what the product is going to be used for but almost all of the coconut choir used for hydroponics is brown choir as it's processed even more after initial harvesting and the word hydroponics is not to put you off if you grow your orchids in a wet dry cycle but i had to add that coca choir is used in hydroponics and seeing as this form of growing orchids is also relatively popular and many would not think of using coca choir in hydroponics it is important to note that there are two ways that the coca choir is processed to be deemed ready to use after having removed the choir from the coconuts, it is soaked in water to loosen and soften the fibers. And here is where the high salt content thoughts begin. Either the coca choir is soaked in fresh water or tidal waters. Naturally, if the process of softening the fibers is undertaken by using tidal waters, it will take up a large amount of salt. But that salt will be flushed out by the manufacturer at a later stage. 
There is a lot more that goes into the process of making cocoa choir safe and optimal for horticultural use. For the purposes of growing orchids, using it with orchids, know that what we get in the pots when our orchids arrive, it is free of salts from the choir itself. What happens during the lifespan of the choir in the pot with fertilizers, etc., salt accumulation can be avoided by being diligent about flushing. But flushing is a regime that is necessary for any media. Coca choir is no different. There are many advantages that come with using coca choir. With its fine texture, cocoa fibers, cocoa choir, allow oxygen to reach the roots of plants while holding water in place. It is naturally resistant to pests and diseases because they can't penetrate through hard cocoa shell husks without breaking apart first. It provides structure, improves aeration, and increases drainage and water retention. <laughs> oh, this sounds like a miracle thing to me, but you know, where there's a pro, there's a con. I'll get to that. It is also inert, which means it contains no nutrients. This implies you need to add fertilizer and maintain the pH level when utilizing cocoa choir. It does not break down fast. The lifespan of cocoa choir in an orchid pot is much, much longer than that of sphagnum moss. I would take a safe guess and say that you can get three years out of cocoa choir in a pot as opposed to the maximum one year recommended when using sphagnum moss. Choir appears to have insect repelling abilities. It can deter fungus gnats and algae growth by keeping the top surface of the pot dry. In this way, choir acts like a mulch on the surface, distributing moisture evenly with its natural wicking action. How well fungus gnats and algae are controlled with choir will depend on the grower's watering preferences and the environment, as per usual. But it is so interesting to note that you can keep the surface dry, whereas the pot stays wet, and all these little nasties, and we call them bichos in Spanish, they won't be flying around because there's no humidity for them to settle on. Everything is happening underneath. Another pro about this Coca Choir is it is a discard product that has been recycled. Whereas the possible equivalent could be considered sphagnum moss, which takes years to grow without depleting resources where it is being grown. I'm not singing high praises about Coca Choir. My intention is to remove the stigma, so let's go to the one downside of getting Coca Choir prepared for use in all its different forms. And that is the amount of fresh water it takes to rid it of the natural high salt content to make it acceptable for use in gardening and for orchids. So if you are environmentally conscious about the resources being used for growing orchids, that is where one could be a little hesitant about the amount of water required. The water pollution is extensive, much like the topic of growing avocados, a very popular crop for decades now, but also a crop that needs exponential amounts of water to grow. And this is a subject which has a polarizing effect in many debates, and understandably so. The decision of using cocoa choir with orchids to add more water retention in the pot where needed is not a calculated one. If one were to compare the benefits of cocoa choir to sphagnum moss when it comes to the environment and awareness of natural resources, then cocoa choir can be just as controversial as harvesting of sphagnum moss is, which takes six years to grow before careful harvesting can take place so as not to destroy the ecosystem in which it grows. Now, <laughs> speaking of ecosystems, many forests have been burnt down since all the coconut benefits have flooded the market. Coconut oil, coconut water, the health and wellness industry, as well as the beauty industry are in on this. I mean, the list just goes on and on. The demand for anything coconut has been exponential and has been growing for decades now. So when it comes to the destruction of ecosystems, coconut plantations and how they cleared natural forests in gangster style have done some serious damage to the environment and our climate. But then, you know, I don't like the word but. But <laughs> there it is again. 
you have resources, you're using only part of that for a specific industry, let's say health, beauty, wellness, in all the different creams, lotions, and diets. How do you then weigh which one is best if you're gonna use something natural? Well, I would actually move towards a product that is considered garbage, but is then being used for something as opposed to just being thrown away while the center is the part that everybody really, really wants. So having all this excess material come from what the different markets demand from the coconut itself, using coco choir could be considered more environmentally friendly than Svagnomos. Again, the jury is out on that one and it is a personal choice. However, the reality is we now have coco choir. We see it in pots, at least we see it in orchid pots in Europe. So are we going to embrace it and learn to work with it successfully or cringe at it when we see it and continue to say, I hate that stuff without giving it a chance? I'm going to add this thought. Not so long ago, eyebrows were raised when orchids were grown in water. Now an accepted grow method called full water culture. And I'm singling full water culture from semi water culture out because bare root orchids in semi water culture get a wet dry period before being exposed to water again. It is a wet dry cycle culture, the media being water. Whereas full water culture, there is no wet dry cycle. And for generations, we have been told that orchid roots will rot if not given a wet dry cycle. Turns out, full water culture is a thing, it is now accepted, it is not a fad, it really, really works, and you can see proof everywhere now. So, going from that tangent and going to coca choir, it is possible that in a few years, coca choir will not be the stuff of evil when it comes to cultivating orchids in it, and doing so successfully, and on top of that, without breaking the piggy bank when it comes to buying new media year in, year out. Do not think that I have any stocks in any company that deals with Coco Choir. <laughs> I'm not here to sell you on this stuff. But I do want to break through the stigma and preempt the inevitable. Once something like Coco Choir is being used commercially, it is here to stay. We might as well get used to it and understand how we can use it with orchids. So if you're still here, I appreciate that you are and thank you so much. Could I ask you to please like the video and share it? May I just ask once again? <laughs> because Orchids and Coco Choir, let's get that dialogue started. And the more we can include in the dialogue, the better. So share it, like it. I thank you for that in advance. Continuing on, as I am only addressing Coco Choir and not Coco chips, which are already widely used and successfully so. Let's talk about which orchids we have in our collections or maybe plan to get and how to use Coco Choir in our pots. If you are growing your orchids in organic media, you can use it as a standalone growing medium or mix it with other substrates like perlite and bark of all sizes. Orchids that love a lot of water like maxillarias, prostechias, oncidiums, cool to cold growing orchids that love their humidity with cool roots, including some slipper orchids, some bidiums. Should I go on? <laughs> Let's narrow that list down and think fine rooted orchids in many cases will do well in Coco Choir. And welcome to the orchid hobby, we have exceptions. Some chunky rooted orchids that can be considered ground orchids in some climates will also do well in Coco Choir. So we're not limited just to the fine roots, but chunky roots like the ones that Cymbidiums have, as previously mentioned, Zygopetalums, Fias, Blatias, well, terrestrial, semi-terrestrial orchids in general. And that includes slipper orchids, yes. It is incredible the amount of orchids that will do well in Coco Choir when you actually sit down and think about it. Considering the high water retention that these orchids require, it is often thought that Coco Choir would not allow any air to circulate around the roots, that it is too compact, that it is suffocating the roots. I will drop Sphagnomos in this thought before I even move on because the same is said about Sphagnomos. Any organic media that breaks down will compact eventually, but the worst culprit is Sphagnomos. Coco Choir will take years to degrade to the point of compacting in the pot. 
Remember the characteristics of cocoa fiber being fibrous and strong in their makeup does not compare to the soft characteristics of sphagnum moss. Cocoa choir permits gas exchange in the pot. And if we step away from the word air when we are really talking about oxygen around the roots, then the gas exchange around the roots potted in cocoa choir includes oxygen. Water has oxygen in it. And when we water orchids, we are providing oxygen that way as well. So cocoa choir does allow for adequate gas exchange. It takes years to compact and if in doubt then adding perlite into the mix will give peace of mind until the confidence is there that the coca choir is in actual fact doing a great job in the pot and the roots are happy especially in super dry climates where humidity is low there is no rainfall and frequent watering is a must coca choir will do the job better and for longer in its existence and freshness than sphagnum moss will now, if you are growing your orchids in inorganic media, then cocoa choir is not something you would add to the pot at first. Or would you? Consider this scenario. If you are growing your orchids in river pebbles only, because you have high humidity in your climate, and you find yourself watering a lot more than your schedule allows, life getting in the way, etc., Adding cocoa choir into the pot as a form of layering will retain the water in the pot and around the roots for long enough while your humidity will then do the rest until it is time for you to water your orchids again. Even in climates with a lot of rainfall, eventually the cocoa choir will flush out of the pot. So know that this is an interim help to get an orchid established if you're not using a water retentive inorganic media as for example, leca pumice or lava rock. I would advise against adding coconut choir into any water retentive inorganic media though. No need. The media will do the work. You don't need to add choir just like you wouldn't add sphagnum moss. Now, no matter the media, all orchids that are being cultivated in pots need to be flushed on a regular basis. Cocoa choir is no different. As a matter of fact, it is easier to flush excess salts out of cocoa choir than it is to flush excess salts out of sphagnum moss. Being more airy in its makeup, in its composition, the pot is cleaner, faster, with less water and less of a workload. While on the subject of salt buildup, flushing and cocoa choir, the word on the streets is that cocoa choir is high in salts. As mentioned at the beginning, cocoa choir does not hit the market for horticultural use without the salts having been leached out. Another question that may come to the forefront is the fertilizing and supplementing regime required when using cocoa choir. As mentioned, cocoa choir is an inert media, so fertilizing and supplementing is no different than what you would do with sphagnum moss. I would actually say that with sphagnum moss, you would have to be a little bit more cautious about over fertilizing because of its tendency to really hold on to any nutrients that do not get absorbed by the orchid. Whereas cocoa choir will release the excess salts readily should the orchid not have absorbed what has been administered. The flushing just pours through the pot. The cocoa choir doesn't grab onto the salts the way the fine fibered sphagnum moss does. And here is a myth that I would like to clear up. Supposedly when using choir as a potting meter, you are supposed to use organic fertilizer only. Well, that is not necessarily true. You can use any fertilizer with coconut choir. Seeing as it is a hydroponic media, you can still use fertilizers and supplements from hydroponic stores as you would be doing with any other organic media you are already growing your orchids in. Take note that the finer the coconut choir, the faster it decomposes. The coarser it is, the longer it lasts. So if you see coconut choir in your orchid pot when you pick it up at the garden center or receive it in the mail, then you can take note of its composition and its density because the nursery where your orchid grew knew the right consistency to use for that orchid. It's a great reference point. Taking what is in the pot to then make any future applications with choir work in the rest of the collection should you one day want to switch it up and get away from sphagnum moss. And one final thought for now. I don't know. Is it going to be the final thought? We'll see. <laughs> Do not confuse cocoa pith or cocoa peat with cocoa choir. Whoop, that's a lot of cocoa. I'm a little bit coco loco now. Anyway, 
pith or peat in its composition is so small and absorbent that if you were to use that, the roots of your orchids may drown. Going back to the consistency of coca choir in the pot of your new orchid, that is what you're looking for. Coco pith or coco peat is similar to saying that peat moss is the same as sphagnum moss and it is not. There's a masterclass video on sphagnum moss, I'll link that in the description. That is where I discuss peat moss and sphagnum moss in more detail. In case you're interested, of course. And if you're still here and heard what I just said. <laughs> so, I'm not entirely sure if this video was helpful in understanding Coco Choir and the fact that this stuff is not in actual fact bad for your orchids. I will find out soon enough if you leave me a comment with your thoughts. Personally, I thought it was important to start bringing attention to this media and to remove the stigma because it's already out there and we might as well get used to it. Know that Coco Choir is not bad for orchids to grow healthy and well over many years in the same pot. Any future repots with Coco Choir or past repots with Coco Choir that I have done will be linked in the description as well. I am just scratching the surface of Coco Choir, but I think it's a good time to stop right here and then see what happens. <laughs> Let me tell you, if I was growing in organic media, I would not shy away from using Coco Choir. And I have had many orchids for many, many, many months in that rubbish media, as we used to call it, and I'd like to get away from that, while they were acclimating to their new environment, and they did not suffer at all. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, or in this case, listening. I appreciate you for doing so to the end of the video. And because of that, I wish you a fantastic day. That one condition remains though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.